Damn. Hey, man. We said it at the end of episode one, but it's only right to say it again. We got one. We, we got, got one. one. Ladies and gentlemen, we got one. And then, I'm not going to lie. This episode, they confirmed a lot of our theories. Well, really, just the biggest one was they're basically shoe. Yeah. Like, still really unclear if they're good or bad. I mean, well, now it kind of they're kind of probably good because these niggas are about to join. Like, they wouldn't join if they were bad type shit. I'm See, I'm kind of... Well, I'm kind of right there with you. Like, I mean, I kind of think they're good, too, just because of both occasions when they pulled up. Like, the first time, I mean, I thought Sword Nigga was part of the Elite Ten, but since the seat's not taken off rip, I'm just going to assume either A, he's dead ass, like, dead ass. Yeah, I'm just going to assume he's dead ass dead and wasn't part of it. Or he is alive and escaped it. I think that's still, like, to be determined. Yeah. But when you look at their situation, they still handled their situation in a way to where they didn't put anyone in harm's way. Like, even when they pulled up on the girl, the way they restrained her while they were trying to figure out her ability... They never actually went after her or laid a hand on her. Then you look at this situation, the same thing kind of just happened. Like, they didn't actually touch her or really target her. They just restrained her, if anything, while trying to slime undead. Like, you could say they've been pulling information. Like, I don't know. I kind of feel like I'm still on the fence, but when you look at how they've been moving, especially the fact that that all of that shit that just happened between unavoidable and that nigga, it happened isolated to where no one else got dragged in. I think that's kind of the biggest seller for me. Yeah, and another thing too is like this situation especially, like they pulled up and the robot nigga said their mission was kill her, capture him. But the other dude that had her like standing there and she couldn't move, he could have easily killed her, I'm assuming. But he didn't. So, that's like, you know what I'm saying? If their goal, if their mission was to do that and they were actually bad, she's probably dead right there. Yeah, exactly. So, that's kind of where I'm assuming. I think we got an Agents of Shields on our yeah. case. I'm not going to lie. And it got so much deeper because the aspect of now there being 10 suits or 10 seats available, like, that's hard. I'm trying to see what the other nine are talking about, let alone just the entire faction. And... If the faction is that big, there's probably a lot of shit to be hunted out there. So that just means the world just got bigger. Yeah. Now, the whole aspect of negators is very interesting. Because it makes it so that you can't do something. Like, Andy, for example, he can't die. The other, the, the two that just pulled up. Like, one of them you couldn't move or whatever the case. I don't know exactly what their shit was, but you couldn't do something. One was unavoidable, and the other, we don't know. Yeah. It was some deep psychological shit, that whatever you were saying. Now, I'm very curious about hers, and I, off the preview, we're probably going to get a lot into that, how to use her ability and shit. Like, I'm very curious about what her ability truly is. Like, how would she just deadass use that? Because we know, unlocked? yeah, because we know he can use it. We know she can use it with Andy. But, I mean, I guess she can just touch niggas. But I'm, I'm wondering if there's more to it than that. Because she looked pretty, when it comes to, like, physically, she looked pretty sorry. I'm going to assume, hopefully, because if not, that would be tragic. But I, I would assume so. Like, maybe not anytime soon, but if we're running with the idea that this is Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., I could see her getting more control over her power as she goes. Because it seems like she's gaining control like shit as she's going. Like, she initially said the whole love-affection thing was a time gap. You see, that shit happened right away, though. So it's like, unless she was capping about her power, it seems she's getting more control over it as it goes. I wonder if, like, 
maybe she'll get to the point where she can use it based off a of scenario and situation kind of like that without necessarily touching him. You know what I mean? Like, maybe yeah. if she keep doing that, you could kind of say maybe. But just for the whole negator aspect, like, yeah, I, I guess that's fact, too, because I was kind of thinking when you said it just are Ages of Shields because, you know, they're called negators. But I guess you could say, like, negators is more so, like, the name of the niggas. Would, if you have a power, you're basically... Yeah. Type shit. Type shit. Okay. And I okay. fuck with that. That's hard. I like that. It's ironic. That shit is hard, though. It is ironic because I haven't watched Ages of Shield in a minute, but I remember, you know what I'm saying? That's hard. Shit. Well, hey, this whole I will say, Pluto, what do you think? You've been kind of quiet, my boy. I don't know that nigga here. Well, uh, I'm not gonna lie, like, the combat sequence was very interesting. Like, we saw a little bit in episode one, but those were fodder niggas. You know what I'm saying? Like, this is like, Someone who can actually bang. They were really into paint throwing them bitches. I'm very excited feet. to see. What you say? No, yeah, that was top 10 right there. Yeah, like, I'm, I'm very excited to see, like, because we know, realistically, we're probably going to join these niggas. So, I'm very curious to see them versus whoever else. Yeah, you know, my biggest thing is... I wonder what his comrades are talking about. Because I think he's dead-ass pulling, like, some more negators, if you will, to the scene. Even if their abilities aren't as crazy. Like, do you think it's something along the lines of... You know how the niggas, like... So far, we've seen four confirmed negators. We have Unavoidable, Undead, Unluck, and Mystery Man. Do you think the negators that start with un, like, their abilities are so broken that maybe it's on some power scaling where they're, like, on some either top seat or their ability could be used to that potential? Because they were saying, like, you're a level 8 threat and all that other shit. Like, I don't know necessarily how that would work unless everyone's an un for the negator part. But That's kind of what I'm thinking. Just I'm kind off, of thinking, like the only ones we've seen, because she was level three before, and then she was five, now she's eight. So even when she was shit. level three, it was unluck. So may, I'm thinking it might be that, but the level oh. aspect is in, like in the sense of like they're all just if you have an ability, it's un something. Oh, so every negator type. Yeah, like it's un whatever the case. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But the level thing is interesting. Like, you're a level 5 threat, level 8 threat. Does it go up to 10, or does it go higher? Yeah. Yeah. I'm... Yeah, that's actually really interesting. Because they're kinda... already level 8, and that's episode 2. If it goes to 10, then we're probably Is not going to see undead level 8 too? Yeah. Well, well, ooh, I, well think... ooh, I don't know if they confirmed it was... like Because I know she is... Wherever he is, I don't think it goes past that. <laughs> yeah. Like, that, I would have to say that. But I'm kind of more so thinking, like, going back to his comrades. Like, they could be uns, but see, my thing is, I thought this nigga was broken. The fact that he's talking about, I need some comrades going into this fight. He's moving extra cautious, and he knows that he needs to move cautious, too. So it's like, I'm wondering... Is there a power gap difference between, like, a top 10 level nigga if you have, like, one of those seats versus just your average ability users? Because from what we've seen, those two niggas were cracked. And it's crazy how we're still technically on the fence for if that one nigga is alive, too, with the swordsman. Yeah. If he wasn't a negator, because we don't even know his ability, but he was competent like one. If he's actually a negator, or let alone if he's not, then what's the gap draw off right there or drop off right there? See, my thing, that is a good question. Like, my thing is, I'm trying to think, because what we've seen so far, uh, what's her name, Fuko? That's the no main girl's name. Idea. I think that's her name, Fuko. I'm going to just call it that for now because I'm pretty sure that's what it is. She's the only one that's not, doesn't seem to be physically gifted. I'm wondering, like, 
Because when it comes to physicality, there's a differences that we've seen, but it's not, like, crazy. Like, I'm thinking, like, because she's a level 8 threat. Now, again, we don't know what it goes up to. Well, but I'm she's thinking not, it's... What do you say? Not to, not to cut you off, but you could say she's not physically gifted, but she is physically cursed. Yeah. And I was th going off of that. I was thinking, like, is it based off of, like, is the strength in this show based off of your ability more so than your actual physicals just because um she's a level eight threat and she has no physicals but her ability you know, is broken you know i was just kind of thinking about that while you were saying that too like it's kind of ironic that our man andy kind of screams kenshin or kenchow a little bit sometimes but Especially with the verse animations looking very similar to My Hero. But here's my thing. When you actually look at My Hero, everyone in their mama is touched somehow with an ability. But how you rise up, it's not necessarily how broken the ability is. It's how broken are you with the ability. That's when it really matters. Low-key, I could low-key see that, like, running with that. I could kind of see that being the case where it's like, it's not necessarily about your ability, but it's about how are you, how good are you with it. Because when you look at Andy, his ability is just as simple as immortality, but he's doing shit that's like, he's like a level max, if you will. Yeah, with he, it. he shot the tip of his finger at a nigga and killed him. Like, that nigga, he, yeah, he got that. Like, he's wicked with it. Yeah. He's wicked with it. And you look at um the other two, how we saw, unavoidable GG to him, but his ability from being just from unavoidable to banging out like that that's actually amazing mm -hmm. we don't know the other niggas ability and vice versa we don't know the other one who pulled up maybe that is the case because it wasn't as clear to see what his ability was just because of all the different shit he was doing yeah and i think that's a big thing too is like being able to figure out someone's ability goes a long way in this verse that's what it's seeming like because even uh, even Andy himself essentially gave up. Like, it's not like he just lost, but he basically gave up. He couldn't figure the shit out. He didn't know how to beat and, it. And vice versa, the reason why he's so casual about the entire world knowing his ability is because it's so broken to where it doesn't even matter. Mm -hmm. you know, like I'm low-key, bro. I'm right there with you. Like, I think that's dead-ass the basis of this show, at least for now. And yet they're still in the paint throwing them hoes too. I'm liking this. I like this shit. I like this. Yeah, sure. This hey, kind of gives me like kind of gives me like Chainsaw Man a little bit in terms of like the abilities being like very, very important to the verse. Whereas Let the alone physicals how the are, agency uses it. Yeah. And then vice versa. Physicals are definitely important. We seen what the sword nigga was doing to Deji the first time, but it doesn't take that front, at least from what we've seen in season one, because we know Gun Devil moving, but it you doesn't take Gun the Devil. front seat to abilities. That's yeah. kind of, yeah. Like, from season one, at least, because from what we've seen from the Gun Devil, nigga wiped out a nigga house and family in, in a blink of an eye. The nigga is fast as shit, but we haven't seen that yet. Well, no, actually, you, I'm right there with you, because... We haven't seen the gun devil actually move yet, but at the same time, the house went like that. The ability had to be quick. Though, at the end of the day, it's right there with you. Like, when you look at Chainsaw Man, the physicalities is getting your foot in the door. From mm -hmm. there, is how are you wicked? Are you with your ability? Like, low-key, I think, I think you're on to something, like... I think we're seeing a case of My Hero and Chainsaw Man in this show. like, And that is a great combination. For only two episodes deep, too, with Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. on the back end. Ooh. I'm not going to lie. We're in for a ride, but hey, man, join the ride. Hit that subscribe button if you already haven't. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Make sure you hit the like button on this video, too, so we know that you're enjoying Undead Unluck. Because Lord knows we are. God damn, we are. We got one, ladies and gentlemen. Also, make sure you guys hit that big notification bell. And make sure it's on all notifications so you don't miss episode three when it drops. We're going to be on that. You feel me? 
Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Make sure you don't miss any of our other videos, too. Tap in with us. Make sure you guys click on our description. Two links will be waiting for you. One will take you to all of our socials, Sons of Tokyo on every platform. The other one will take you to our Discord. Make sure you guys join that. Come tap in with us. Talk about anything, anime, not anime, sports, movies, whatever. It don't matter. Just come vibe out. Hey, then. But, uh, yeah, man. With that being said, SOT out.